Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble and Me, and today we are making some beautiful winter solstice bath bombs using the bath bomb press. Now you can see I have two different, slightly different colored bath bombs here. It's using the same dyes and the same ingredients, just that this one has quite a lot more of it than this one. So the dye is actually uh, called a black dye, but I've noticed it's definitely much more of a purple dye in uh, sort of lower-ish concentrations. So this one uses 0.03% and this uses 0.2%. This one's definitely a lot darker, a lot more sort of inky-ish looking. Uh, however, this one will leave a ring in your tub, whereas this one does not. They both dye the bath water, which is awesome. So the color comes from a beautiful new water soluble dye from Yellow Bee. Details on that are in the blog. But yeah, so today in the video, we're gonna be doing the 0.03% the one, but I do have discussion of both versions on the blog so that you can kind of decide what you want. You want like a darker bath bomb, but maybe need to like clean your tub afterwards, or are you chill with, uh, with this version? <laughs> Now you don't need a bath bomb press to make these bath bombs, but I sure had a lot of fun using it. I find that it creates incredibly dense bath bombs that really fizz for longer than hand press ones because they're just so solid. My bath bomb press is the bath bomb press out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. So they're located about a three-ish hour uh, drive north of me here in Calgary. Something you'll notice about the bath bombs in this video is that the making process is a little different than it is in my previous bath bomb making videos. And I have Ariane and her wonderful videos uh, on bath bomb making to thank for that. In the past, when I have made bath bombs, I've done it in a what seems to be a very popular way. You mix together all your, your dry ingredients and then you work in the oils. And then when that's all there, then you have mister bottles of witch hazel and a 70% isopropyl alcohol. And you are quickly misting and then mixing to try to uh, get just the right amount of moisture into the bath bomb. Make sure that it'll still you know hold together uh, so you can mold it, you know, which is, is necessary, but it doesn't react uh, prematurely in the bowl. So I've been making bath bombs like that for years. But when I went to make a batch of bath bombs that way using the press it just wasn't as kind of efficient as I thought it could be I think part of it is that I'm still a little slower with the press than I am with hand molding so I find myself kind of constantly re-misting and mixing and that was kind of annoying so I turned to Ariane's videos to see kind of what she was doing that I wasn't doing because she is the bath bomb queen. I think the biggest thing that Ariane does that I wasn't doing was that she was mixing her wet ingredients into just like the baking soda and the, the basic ingredients. And so she would incorporate kind of her like water, alcohol, witch hazel, whatever, into the baking soda. And because there was no citric acid or any acidic ingredients present in the powder mixture, you don't have to worry about it reacting. So you can take your sweet time blending your witch hazel and, and the dye in our case into the baking soda. And then once that's completely thoroughly distributed, then you can add your acidic ingredients. Yes, this is, this is so much easier. You can then, you know, you don't have to kind of worry about the faffing and the quick mixing and the panic and the, uh, it's just, oh, it's brilliant. So thank you so much, Ariane. I'll make sure to link to her channel in the description box below. With that piece of wisdom in my brain, I went back and revisited my formulation and tweaked and adjusted it to include the witch hazel right in the formulation. Because in the past, it's just sort of been an as needed in a mister bottle thing, but now it's, it's right in there. So you get a lot more reliable results which is just awesome. As always, if you want more information about this project, please make sure you are reading the blog post, which is linked in the description box below. There you'll find information on substitutions, scaling, shelf life, links to places to buy all of the ingredients, including the fabulous bath bomb press, the beautiful water soluble dye we're using, and the biodegradable glitters, and yeah, a whole lot more. But come on, let's go make some bath bombs. We're going to begin by blooming our dye. So the dye we're using today is this Acid Black 2 from Yellow Bee. It's very potent and so we don't need much at all. We're using it at 0.03%. So in this small dish, I already have 0.24 grams of the dye. And to that, I'm going to add 4.16 grams of Witch Hazel Distillate. So you can see that that has very quickly become really inky. Now I can still see some solid bits of dye 
in the corner here. I'm not sure how well that's coming across on camera as this is so dark, but we're going to give that a good whisking to get everything to dissolve as much as possible. If you do have a few little bits of undissolved dye, that's okay. I find that they work in well once we get in there uh, into the full mixture with our hands, but we do want to bloom it up uh, as much as possible. So here we have the rest of our ingredients all measured out. So in this big bowl, which is going to be our sort of main working bowl, we have our baking soda, which you can kind of see over here, and the Epsom salts up here. So you need 424 grams of baking soda and 76.8 grams of Epsom salts. In this little container off to the side, we have our acidic ingredients. So we have 216 grams of citric acid and 40 grams of cream of tartar. This of course is our dye and witch hazel mixture. And this little dish has our oil type things in it. So we have 12.8 grams of polysorbate 80, 20 grams of apricot kernel oil, and six grams of our fragrance. And for this project, I've chosen one called Salty Sea Air from Rustic Essentials, but please make sure you are reading the blog post for more information on alternatives. Before we start mixing stuff up, I'm putting on some gloves. So this is in large part because the dye is so potent that I don't want sort of inky, purpley, blacky blue hands for the next day or so. Uh, but it also helps keep me from you know, smelling the fragrance oil on myself all the time. So get that mixed up. And then we're going to start by blending in the, uh, the witch hazel dye mixture. And we're starting here by incorporating the water before we add the acidic mixture. So if we only have you know, the, the basic ingredients in there, it can't react. And so I find that, you know, we add it now, uh, the, the watery bits, add it now, mix it around, and then uh, we have a lot fewer sort of premature reaction concerns. Up next, we're going to add our acidic ingredients and work those in as well. and then our oily ingredients. Once everything has worked together, you should have kind of a soft, clumpy mixture. Give that a, a squeeze, holds together. And we can mold these with a, a handheld spherical mold. I've got one here two big kind of gentle scoops, press it together, dust off the edges, do not twist the, uh, the mold or you'll cleave the bath bomb in two and then whack, 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 whack. But that is not what we are going to do today. We are going to use the bath bomb press. So here is our pressing setup. We have the bath bomb press here. We have a scale to weigh out our mixture. So our bath bombs are, uh, are evenly sized. We have our molds. I'm using the small cube mold. And then I have sort of a tray here for laying the bath bombs out in. So this is actually kind of an old uh, drawer liner utensil organizer. So it has a couple raised you know, rubber tracks in it. Uh, it's not in a drawer right now because it's about three inches longer than every single drawer in my house. But I find that these little tracks are great for elevating the bath bombs to, to help them dry out. And you can also see a little bit of a teaser of how we are going to be decorating these. So I'm going to be weighing out 75 grams of the bath bomb mixture for each bath bomb. And then we're gonna press that at about 45 PSI. For our finishing touch, as you can see on these bath bombs, we are going to do a bit of a mica slash glitter drizzle. So in this little bowl here, I have a blend of a couple different biodegradable glitters from Yellow Bee. And so the Glamour Silver is straight 
from silver and then the reflections ones, I don't know if it's really coming across on camera, but they shift to different colors and different lights. So I thought that was really um, suited to the winter solstice. So we are going to wet this mixture with some 99% isopropyl alcohol. Kind of a fun note, this is just the bottle that the isopropyl alcohol comes in, but I discovered that this trigger cap that Yellow Bee sells uh, screws onto the bottle perfectly, so it's great for misting the alcohol when you might need that for possibly disinfecting a, uh, a surface or if, if you're making bath bombs. So we're gonna whisk this up. Um, this does end up being a, a reasonably kind of chunky mixture, so I find that you know you want to be re-whisking it so that the glitter doesn't clog the pipette. And this is just a little disposable pipette from SKS and they sell them in a variety of sizes and I sure like having some smaller ones on hand for not only this sort of thing but it's great for fragrance oils and essential oils and it feels a lot less wasteful than the full size like seven and eight millimeter ones. So we're just kind of scattering and drizzling and splatting if you wanted to, you can also paint with mixtures like this. So you can grab a, a paintbrush and uh, paint sort of patterns and whatever tickles your fancy on your bath bombs. It is important that whatever you wet your mixture with doesn't have water in it. So make sure you're not using 70% isopropyl alcohol because that will uh, lightly react with the bath bombs and they'll kind of swell up a bit underneath your swirl, which I've done before and is kind of looks kind of cool, but it's not really what we're going for. Um, you can also use iso, uh, isododecane, works a treat if you happen to have it. Once you feel you have sufficiently glittered up a storm, really all that's left to do is let these dry. Get a little closer there so you can get a feel for the shimmer. Those ones are still wet. And then these ones, it's had a chance to dry out and looks pretty darn cool. We'll wrap up with a little bit of a use demo with this little kind of leftover dude. And once the uh, sort of foamy bit settles down, your bath water will be a sort of soft purple color. I have a photo of that on the blog, so make sure you are checking that out. There you go. So we just made some gorgeous winter solstice bath bombs using the bath bomb press. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and please make sure you are going down to the description box below this video and clicking through to find this post on my blog on humblebeeandme.com where you'll find a lot more information, including links to places to buy all of the ingredients, information on substitutions, scaling, shelf life, and a whole lot more. So thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.